what is up guys and welcome back to the channel guys um we back here in norway we got 101 facts about norway uh, i had someone send me this video so we about to check it out uh, i think i did sweden and denmark now we got norway i think those are the only three i did the 101 facts with um of course these videos are a little longer so that's why it, it do takes me time to get to these you know especially it depends on the day it depends on the day but we about to check this out see what it's about y'all hit that subscribe button Hey, send me more video suggestions. Well, greetings, mother actors. My name is Sam, and good dog till die to you. Oh, <laughs> God, I've lost them already. In case you're wondering, though, that was some Norwegian, because today we're talking about the most Nor of all the ways, Norway. <laughs> yes, the land of Farikol, iconic artwork, oh, oh. and literally hell on earth. You'll see, oh, wow. you'll see. But who is this penguin? And why is he so important? Which famous movie planet did Norway double up for? And will my accent be in any way convincing? Will it? <laughs> Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so grab your skis and get ready to encounter one of the happiest places on Earth. What a sweet change that'll be, as we count through 101 facts about Norway. Pizza. Number one. Say hello to Norway, or rather doff your cap and do a curtsy, because this is the kingdom of Norway, don't you know? It's one of those cool Scandinavian countries that likes to hang out in northwestern Europe wearing cardigans and solving murders. <laughs> Number two. The capital is Oslo, which is also, also backwards, sort of. Anyway, it was founded in about 1050, and Oslo. as of the 27th of February 2020, the municipality of Oslo has a population of around 693,491. Number three. The city is sometimes oh. known under the nickname the Tiger City, probably inspired by an 1870 poem by Bjorn Stjern Bjornsson, which referenced then Christiana in central Oslo, not what? because they're fans of Joe Exotic. The nickname is mostly used by Norwegians from out of town, and rarely by those in the actual Oslo region. Okay, Oslo is pretty big though, Oslo is big, I definitely gotta visit there. Number four. The city used to be called Christiania, Christiania. after a fire ripped through Oslo in 1624. King Christian IV of Denmark and Norway ordered the city to be rebuilt across the bay, near Akershus Castle, and called the New Oslo Christiania. Number 5. Their cruise Oslo did. was kept for the now poor suburb where the original city stood, which today is known as Gamlebjen. After many years of fierce debate, the original name of Oslo was restored in 1925. Number 6. Oslo residents are some of the healthiest people in Norway. 19% mm. of the population is <laughs> overweight, which compares favorably to the national average of 28%. The survey also- I get 19% is not bad. 19% is not bad. You know, they didn't have to show my guy Billy here. Is At least they didn't show his face. Which compares favorably to the national average of 28%. <laughs> I feel like that's The survey also now. found that Oslo drinks less sugary soft drinks than average, and the numbers walking at least 30 minutes per day are better than average. Mm. Number 17. They've also got a severe case of the Joysies, because Norway is the second the happiest Joysies. country in the world, beaten by the Finnish line by, you guessed it, Finland. the lines named after them, the Finnish line. <laughs> Number eight. And according to the 2013 Global Peace Index, Norway is one of the most peaceful countries in the world, ranking 18th out of 163 countries. Oh. Hmm, a lack Not of war 18. and violence making people happier? What kind of nonsense is this? <laughs> Number nine. Speaking of Oslo, by the way, the Nobel Prize awards are held in Oslo in the City Hall every autumn. Whether or not they will be this year, <laughs> who knows? But nice to know the location in your head if you feel kind of noble. Number 10. They love Nobel Prizes so damn much, there's also a Nobel Peace Center where visitors mm. can find out more about the prize that's been given out since 1903. Number 11. <laughs> <laughs> From the 14th to the 25th of February 1952, Oslo held the Winter Olympics. Oh. Norway topped the medal table with 16 medals. Dang, they, seven... used to, they used to let the crowd be that close? Hold up, I went too far back. Seven were gold, so they held the Winter Olympic. Dang. And I've seen that too. I was watching uh, some basketball highlights from like the 80s, like Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and... They were storming the court like college basketball games in the NBA. It, it was crazy. It's crazy. Norway topped the medal table with 16 medals, of which seven were gold, so they clearly mm. weren't very Oslo. Uh, Oslo. There's only so many <laughs> puns I can make here, guys. Number 12. The river that goes through the city is pretty unique, as it has two spellings. Where some will say Akaselva, others will say Akaselven. This is similar to my name. Some people call me Sam, and some people call me Dick for some reason, even though my name's not <laughs> Richard. Weird. Number 13. 
Norway shares its borders with three countries, Russia and Finland, the northeast, but these are tiny compared to the whopping 1,600 km border it shares with Sweden, the longest mm. entirely inside Europe. Unlucky Russia and Ukraine. Number Dang. 14. When you think of Norwegian territory, you probably think of this long, thin thing with a massive dangly bit on the end. That's snuggled up next to Sweden, but look up and you'll find the island of Svalbard, which has been part of the King of oh, Norway yeah. since 1925. Number 15. Svalbard is unique as it's a visa-free zone. But like, I've been that, saying that Svalbard, uh, that, that's a hard word to say. Means anyone from but I have checked out a few videos from there, it was, very, it was pretty unique. Country pretty can cool go country. there to live or work. In some cases, immigrants who were denied a visa to live in mainland Norway move to the island, live there for seven years, become Norwegian citizens, and then move back to Norway. You know, mm. the long dangly bit. Ugh, I can't say that with a straight face. <laughs> Number 16. Approximately 5.4 million people live in Norway, giving a population smaller than London. Plus, those lucky Norwegians have a load more space too, with the country rocking 385,178 kilometers squared of territory. Bonus fact, territory. that's bigger than London and my flat. Number 17. Oslo is Norway's most ethnically diverse city too. 25% of the city's population were born elsewhere, and an additional 7.8% were born to immigrant parents. Most of the city's population with an immigrant background come from Pakistan, followed by Poland, Sweden, and Somalia. Mm -hmm. Number 18. All that space means Norway has a population density of just 15 people per square kilometre. The only place in the whole of Europe you're less likely to bump into someone is Iceland. Oh, no, not Iceland. that one. The Nordic one. It has just 3.5 people per square kilometre. Number 19. While we're on the subject of Nordic countries, Norway is both Nordic and Scandinavian. But what's the difference, I hear at least one of you ask? Well, sit down and strap in, because it's going to get complicated. First off, we've got the Scandinavian Peninsula, which refers to mainland Norway, mainland Sweden, and this bit of Finland. Number 20. Then we've got the more common definition of Scandinavia, which includes Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, but not that tiny bit of Finland. These three kingdoms are part of the continental so Scandinavian tiny bit language of group and share languages descended from Old Norse. Still with me? No? Well, it's not going to get any better. Number 21. Because now it's time for the Nordic countries. Now these include Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, and their associated bits and pieces. This geographical grouping share cultural links and were once all united as part of the Kalmar Union back in the 15th century. Number 22. Uh, hey, it's fairly Swift. common for English speakers to use Nordic and Scandinavian interchangeably, but when you're referring to Norway, you can't be wrong in this regard, since it's in both. So, phew. Number 23. Of course, as an English speaker, I'm used to calling Norway, well, Norway. But in the <laughs> local lingo, it's actually called Norge or Noreg. Norge. Two different names. Well, that's because the Norwegian language has two different written forms, Bokmal and Norsk. Norsk. Although 85 to 90% of Norwegians use Bokmal, so I guess Norge is the winner. Number 90, mm. what? Number 24. <laughs> the name Norway has traditionally been thought to mean North Way or a way leading to the North. North but seeing way. as that's the, you know, easy answer, there's debate about whether or not that's true. Alternative theories say the name... I would have thought that. I would have thought that. North Way? The North Way? The, you Up know, north. easy answer. There's debate about whether or not that's true. Alternative theories say the name actually means the way with the narrow fjords and lakes, the inlet country, or that it was named after King Nor. A mythological king, king who was short in stature. Number 25. People have lived in Norway for ages. Number 26. <laughs> I'm joking. Imagine if that was it. The truth is, evidence <laughs> oh, of. What? Somebody got a bounce house in their yard right there. That little purple there. Norway for ages. Number 26. <laughs> I'm joking. Imagine if that was it. The truth is, evidence of humans doing their thing in Norway goes hey, back you can around 12,000 years. But a kingdom of Norway, similar to the one we might recognise today, didn't come into existence until 872. Number 26. Prior to that date, Norway was basically Game of Thrones on steroids, with the land divided up between at least 20 rulers, each Dang. ruling their own petty kingdoms. Number 27. All that changed at the Battle of Hafafjord, sometime between what 872 and 900 where the Viking chief Harald Fairhair, <laughs> what a great name, won victory and crowned himself the first king of the Norwegians, and who has a better story than Fairhair? Fairhair. Number 28. Well, his successor does. Eric Haraldson earned himself the nickname Bloodaxe by killing his brother so he could sit on the throne. Dang. That's brothers, plural, by the way. 
According to the sagas, yeah, Eric had 19 of them, but the brother killer only managed to murder between four and seven bros, and ultimately lost the Norwegian crown to one of his younger siblings. Dang, that is harsh. Just to be the king? Respect to fair hair, he must though, have been 20 the middle sons, child. he must have been knackered. Number 29. Norway and Vikings are like fish and chips, or Sam and Jennifer. They <laughs> just go together. Those Luton Tooten raiders come from all over Scandinavia, but the actual term Viking might specifically come from a part of Norway. One theory suggests that the word Viking refers to a person from Viken, a part of Norway not too far Viking. from Oslo. Now, for fans of pillaging and violence, go check out 101 Facts About Vikings. After this one, obviously. <laughs> Number 30. I might have to. After a period of civil war between 1130 and 1240, which saw over 20 kings and pretenders to the throne battle it out for supremacy again, Norway finally found a bit of peace and quiet. What is until that? Until 1349. That year, a mysterious ghost ship arrived in Bergen Harbour, and it wasn't carrying presents for the locals. Number 31. Legend has it the boat set sail from England, but on its journey the crew had been struck down with a horrible oh. disease, leaving the boat to drift into Norwegian territory. On board was the Grim Reaper oh, and the man. Black Death, or maybe Thanos, because they subsequently infected the country and killed up to 40 to 50 percent of the entire Norway population. Dang. Number 32. Things didn't get much better for Norway when King Olaf IV died suddenly in 1387, and spoiler alert, he would be the last Norwegian king born on Norwegian soil for more than 550 years. After Olaf kicked the bucket, Norway became part of the Kalmar Union with its Scandi neighbours Denmark and Sweden. Number 33. Sadly, try. things weren't exactly neighbourly inside the Kalmar Union, with Denmark acting like it owned the place. <laughs> in 1523, Sweden packed its bags, said goodbye and became independent. That left Norway to fend for itself against Denmark, who went power mad between 1536 and 37, essentially relegating Norway to the status of a Danish province, and forced it to accept Protestantism. Protestantism. Number 34. During the Napoleonic Wars, Denmark-Norway was allied with France and was defeated. Get wrecked. Under the Dang. terms of the Treaty of Kiel in 1814, Denmark was forced to hand Norway over to Sweden as war booty. Although the Danes managed to keep <laughs> control of old Norwegian territories like Iceland, Greenland and the Faroe Islands. So, all in all, not a great time for Norwegians. That sucks. Number 35. Norway tried to escape this shotgun marriage by declaring independence before Sweden could take control. But when Sweden arrived in the summer of 1814 with actual guns and British ships, they forced Norway to say I do to a union between the two kingdoms. <laughs> Number 36. Every year on May 17th, Norway remembers this brief foray into independence with Constitution Day, the National Day of Norway, and a public holiday. So May holiday. 17th is like their Constitution Day, Independence Day? Remembers this brief foray into independence with Constitution Day, the National Day of Norway, and a public holiday with parades and lots of flags. Norwegian ones, I imagine. I might have to remember this, uh, especially when this time rolls back around. Because there were some days, I, I was forgetting some days that people, some, I had some subscriber mention me some days that, you know, specific days that happen in different countries in Europe and stuff like that. I'd be missing some. Number stuff. 37. Norway finally regained its freedom in 1905 after the Norwegian parliament, the Storting, moved to dissolve the union with Sweden. They then asked voters whether they agreed with the decision in a referendum, and 99.95% of them told Sweden to do one. Only 184 Norwegians voted to remain in the union. Mm. Number 38. In a second referendum that year, 78.9% of voters decided it would be best for Norway to be a monarchy rather than a republic. And thus, Prince Karl of Denmark was chosen to become King Hakon VII of Norway, the first independent monarch of the country since Fact 32, I mean, uh, 1387. <laughs> Number 39. During World War I, Norway stayed neutral, and it tried to do the same in World War II, but Hitler wasn't having oh, any of that, dang. and invaded the country in April 1940. Allied troops arrived a week later, but were unable to- That is crazy! Norway stayed neutral, and it tried to do the same in World War II, but Hitler wasn't having any of that, and invaded the country in April 1940. Allied Dang. troops arrived a week later, but were unable to kick out the Nazi forces, who occupied the country until the end of the war. Number 40. Man. Good old King Hakon VII and the government didn't really fancy life under the jackboot and fled to Britain to organise resistance. Since 1947, to say thanks and to remember Britain's support Not during this queen. difficult time, Norway has donated a massive Christmas tree to the UK every year, which goes on display in Trafalgar Square. Number 41. Unfortunately, up. not all Christmas. Norwegians at the time were anti-Nazi. Discount Hitler and massive bell Vidkun Quisling helped establish a regime for the Nazis to run Norway during the war. As a result, his name literally became another word for traitor. Oh, dang. The meaning 
of life. Look it up in the dictionary and it means a person who helps an enemy that has taken control of his or her country. And is synonymous with adulterous, backstabber, betrayal, betrayer, Damn. break ranks, deserter, do the dirty on someone, you get the idea. Number 43. After the war, Norway joined the United Nations in 1945 and became a founding member of NATO in 1949, but despite having close ties with the EU, it isn't actually a member. Twice in referendums in 1972 and 1994, just over half the public voted against joining the organisation, so Norway stayed out. No. Number 44. Shortly after the Cold War ended, Norwegian scientists almost caused a nuclear apocalypse. Oh. In 1995, a group of scientists studying the Northern Lights launched a rocket from the island of Andoya, but Russia mistook this for a US nuclear strike, handed their president the nuclear briefcase and activated its nuclear keys. Number 45. For about 20 minutes, Russia seriously considered launching nukes in America and NATO, but thankfully realised their mistake before toasting all life on Earth. Number 46. In 1714, Norwegian naval officer Peter Jensen Vessel Tordenskjold had a run-in with an English ship. Fighting ensued, lasting 14 hours and leaving both Dang. ships badly damaged. During the battle, Vessel ran out of ammo, but rather than give up, he asked the English ship if they would give him any of their ammo so they could continue fighting. <laughs> I think that went. <laughs> Number 47. What? So you asked the enemy, hey, can we borrow some ammo so we can continue to fight y'all? Give him any of their ammo That's so wild. they can continue fighting. How do you think that went? <laughs> Number 47. The English captain said no. So not very well. Oh, wait, no. Actually, instead, they shared a drink and went their separate ways afterwards. What? Oh, lovely. Number 48. That's wild. Monty Python's The Life of Brian was banned in Norway on the grounds what? it was blasphemous. As a result, it was it's marketed funny. in Sweden as the film So Funny, it was banned in Norway. That, the Life of Brian, yeah, this, this is pretty funny. As somebody, I've seen like two videos, I seen, I had seen two videos. I haven't got a chance to see the full movies yet, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to. As a result, it was marketed in Sweden as the film So Funny, it was banned in Norway. <laughs> Number 49. Everyone's favourite Willy. Come on now, you're better than that. I'm talking about Keiko Not the Orca Willy. from Free Willy who was released into the wild in 2002 after more than two decades in captivity. Weeks after his release, he was found living up in Norway in Skolvik Fjord. What? Number 50. He missed human contact so much, he would let children go for rides on his back, but if you fancied a free whale ride, sadly Keiko passed away in 2003. But we'll Man. always have Willy. Free Willy. Number 51. Every year, the people of Norway consume about 50 million frozen pizzas. That's five kilos of frozen Dejourno. pizza for every one of them. According to some, they're the biggest consumers of pizza per person in the entire world. Wow. Norwegians really love pizza, huh? I feel like I did a song that was a pizza commercial, really. It made me want to buy some frozen pizza. They're the biggest consumers of pizza per person in the entire world. Number 52. But it's one brand in particular that the locals just can't get need some more cheese on it. Grandiosa. Yeah. 20% of the population consider it a national dish, and when the company released a pizza-themed song called Respect for Grandiosa in 2006, Grandiosa. it topped the charts <laughs> for eight consecutive weeks. Number 53. Who would have thought a pizza song or a song about pizza would just be... I mean, I ain't gonna lie. The last song, I, it was jamming. It was catchy, so, you know, it could have been on the chart. But the national dish is for the call. This is a stew consisting of mutton to the bone, cabbage, and boiled potatoes. Potatoes. Number 54. On September 29th, 2012, Guinness World Records approved the world record of making the largest portion of foricol ever. Oh. The result was 594.2 kilograms of foricol, prepared to be finished at the same time, consisting of 60% lamb and 40% cabbage. This happened in Spikasupa, oh. Oslo, Norway, and there were 10,000 guests present. I wonder what they ate. <laughs> Definitely the foreign call, I mean. Number 55. Brunost, or brown cheese, is considered an important part of Norwegian huh? gastronomical and cultural identity and heritage. Brown cheese? This is the first time I've ever seen it. And cheese is considered an important like part of Norwegian gastronomical and cultural identity and heritage. Brunost is primarily produced and consumed in Norway, and it's regarded as one of the country's most iconic foodstuffs. Number 56. Ostehovel, a modern cheese slicer or cheese plane, was invented by Thor Bjorklund in 1925 mm -hmm. in Norway, and the design was based on the carpenter's plane. It's not an actual plane. That looked like... ...five in Norway, and the design... That looked like the thing that holds some tape, and you can get the tape off of it. ...is based on the, the carpenter's plane. 
It's not an actual plane. A plane made of cheese wouldn't go far. But it would taste <laughs> nice. Number 57. Norway's national drink is Akvit or Aquavit. This is a potato-based spirit seasoned with caraway seeds or sometimes fennel, cumin, star anansi, dill or orange peel. Mm. It was derived in 1831 from whiskey created by Eskebille. Number 58. There are almost as many people with Norwegian ancestry living in America today than there oh, wow. are people in Norway. Around 4,650,000 or 1.5% of Americans have Norwegian blood. The bulk of this immigration what? took place between 1825 and 1925, when 800,000 Norwegians came to the USA. Number wow, 59. that's new. With the exception of Ireland, no other country lost a higher share of its population to the US. These routes are clearly still very important, as one Norwegian immigrant who became a US World War II veteran was given a full Viking burial by the US Coastal Guard in 2014. Number 60. Nowadays, Norway's population growth is actually from immigration. In 2018, 52,000 immigrants arrived in the country, oh, wow. and with 34,000 people emigrating plus low birth rates, Norway would actually have a declining population without it. Number 61. In fact, approximately 750,000 immigrants call Norway home. That's just over 14.4% of the entire population. Oh, this means there's 4,650,000 Norwegians in Norway versus 4,650,000 Norwegian Americans in America. So if you can't afford a trip to Oslo, just go to Minnesota. Number 62. Wow. See, I've never been to Minnesota, but um, the football team would make sense to me on why uh, they're called the Minnesota Vikings. So, but I mean, it, it's cold in Minnesota too. I know. Okay. I'm gonna have to go to Minnesota and see what they got that maybe Scandinavian type culture there. And uh, so, if you can't afford a trip to Oslo, just go to Minnesota. Number sixty-two. You may remember that I mentioned earlier that Norway is the happiest country on Earth, or at least one of them. Well, according to the UN's reports editors, the secret to happiness includes good social support networks, social trust, honest government, safe environments, and healthy lives. And lots and lots of pizza. That pizza. last bit was me, not the UN. Number 63. Lots of money also helps in the realm of happiness, or at least I'm told. And that's good, because Norway has plenty of dollars. Back in 1990, the country set not up a fund 90s. to preserve the nation's vast oil and gas wealth for future generations. Nintendo 64. Hey. Today, that fund is worth $1 trillion and owns around 1.5% of all shares in listed companies. Oh this sovereign wealth fund helps pay for top-notch social welfare and its value means that there's $160,000 for each person living in Norway. Wow. Number 65. Norway has its fair share of war heroes. One is a commander by the name of Jan Balsrud, who became a legend after a 1943 raid he was on in the fjords went wrong. On the run from the Germans for nine weeks, Balsrud somehow survived the following, his feet being frozen solid, being buried up to his neck in an avalanche, and being trapped again in a snow tomb for four days. Yes. Number 66. I got had it rough. No, wait, sorry, there's more. Two weeks in a cave where he had to amputate most of his toes to avoid frostbite and gangrene, and several weeks on a stretcher carried by various Norwegians who got him to safety. Amazingly, he recovered from that and helped train other fighters wow. to fight the Nazis. You're a legend, Balsrud. That is some legendary stuff right there, man, because I would have had to rest in peace if we're going through all that. Number 67. Norway invented salmon sushi. Back in salmon the 1980s, sushi. Norway had too much of it, so they hatched a plan to introduce salmon sushi to Japan. Mm. It took until 1995 for the plan to work, because That's until new. Norway's campaign, raw salmon was considered disgusting by Japanese consumers, as their local species carried parasites. Today, salmon sushi can be found all over the world, and it's all thanks to Norway. Wow. Number 68. The Norwegian military is home to the world's highest ranking penguin. Brigadier Sir Nils Olaf III is a king penguin and a member of Norway's King's Guard. Oh, I've seen Sir this. Nils also I've seen this penguin. He'd just be chilling. Carries a knighthood after one of his predecessors was given the honour by King Harald V in 2008. Number 69. So Pizza. There's a long held myth that it's illegal to die on the island of Longyearbyen. What is true is that you're not allowed to be buried there. It's so cold that bodies won't decompose, and remains in a cemetery there still carry traces of Spanish flu, a pandemic that killed 50 million people between 1918 and 1920, Dang. although the virus is not thought to be a danger. Number 70. If you can ignore the potentially deadly virus lurking in the ground, Svalbard isn't actually that bad a place to go in case of the apocalypse. On the <laughs> island, buried in a vault 100 metres deep inside a mountain, is the Global Seed Vault. Inside, there are around 1 million samples of various Sweet crops, potato. so in the event of doomsday, we'll have stuff to grow. Number 71. Norway is a great country to be in if you're aspiring to be a writer. 
The Arts Council hmm. buys 1,000 copies of new Norwegian books to give out to libraries. Well, I need to go right in Nor- uh, Norway then, because I actually, I've written three books. If y'all haven't know, yeah, if I haven't told y'all, yeah, I don't know, some of y'all may be new by the time I have mentioned that, but I have written three books. Let me get in contact with Norway real quick. The idea is to support small publishers and new writers who get royalties from the copies bought. If you publish a children's book, they even buy an extra 550. Number 72. The Screen by Edvard Munch is arguably the most famous Norwegian painting, but there's actually four of them. There's two in paint and two in pastels. Mm. Number 73. In 2012, one of the pastel versions sold for $120 million, making it the most expensive artwork sold at auction at the time. What does this mean? This art, it looked like just a person holding his face. Sorry, my mic in a way. It looked like a per 120 mil. I could draw this for 120 mil. Pastel version sold for $120 million, making it the most expensive artwork sold at auction at the that time. That's crazy. It now sits seventh on It looked like list. it's a crayon. Who drew this? Number 17. Like they use some oh, and the iconic mask from the film Scream, yeah, that's based on the Scream. As is the face screaming no in fear way. emoji. So, big cultural touchstones there, lads. Number 75. So Scream is a real thing? I used to always see it when I was younger. And this is an actual real thing? That's crazy. iconic mask from the film Scream, yeah, that's based on the Scream. As is the face screaming in fear emoji. So, big cultural touchstones there, lads. That's Number some new 75. Information. You know what sucks? Running out of money at Christmas time, Thanks. or not having enough cash to enjoy your holidays in the summer. Now don't panic though, because the Norwegian government has you covered. <laughs> you see, Norway operates on a 10.5 month income tax system, which means you don't pay tax in June and only half tax in December. Mm. I mean, technically you just pay more in the other months, but still, the extra moolah in holiday time does sound great. Always great. Number 76. Fans of Star Wars, or The Empire, Empire Strikes, Strikes Back, Back in particular, might enjoy a trip to Norway. The iconic scenes of the planet Hoth were filmed in the remote town of Finns and wow. in the nearby Hard Danger Jökulin Fjord. During filming in 1979, George Lucas and co had to battle the elements as the country experienced its worst winter storm in 50 years. Number seven. I have to go watch that and check that out. You know, me personally, I'm a, I'm a fan of the Revenge of the Sith. That's my favorite one. Seven. Temperatures reach minus 29 degrees Celsius. That's minus 20.2 degrees Fahrenheit, and around 5.5 meters of snow fell. Ooh. The shot of Luke escaping the Wampa by running out of its cave was actually just Mark Hamill running to the hotel and into the snow right outside the building. <laughs> Number That's crazy. Even though he was born in Wales, Roald Dahl's parents were both Norwegian immigrants. His first language was Norwegian, and he was baptized at the Norwegian church in Cardiff. Mm. Number 79. Dahl was influenced by Norwegian folklore myths and legends that his mother would tell him, and some of his children's books contain references or elements inspired by these stories, oh, wow. such as the giants in the BFG, the I Fox like family one. in Fantastic Mr. Fox, and the trolls in the Min Pins. Huh. Number 80. In fact, the chocolate factory in Charlie and the what? Chocolate Factory was based on the Freya Chocolate Factory in Oslo. Number 81. You learn something new every day. I know the BFG, Charlie and the Chocolate. That's crazy. They learn something new every day, though. In 2002, one of Cardiff Bay's modern landmarks, the Oval Basin Plaza, was renamed Roald Dahl Plas. Plas is Norwegian for place or square, alluding to the writer's Norwegian roots. Number 82. In 2017, the airline Norwegian announced Dahl's image would appear on the tail fin of one of their Boeing 737-800 aircraft. He's one of the company's six British tail fin heroes, including Queen frontman Freddie Mercury. Number 83. Norwegians are obsessed with skiing, and a man called Sondre Norheim is said to be the pioneer of modern skiing and the father mm. of the Telemark skiing. What's that I hear you ask? Well, hang on. Number 84. Telemark skiing is a skiing technique that combines the elements of alpine and Nordic skiing. Telemark mm. skiing is named after the Telemark region of Norway, where it all came from, baby. <laughs> Number 85. They love skiing so much that cross-country skiing is the country's national sport. In fact, one chap called Berger Rood, who was Norwegian, that's why we're talking about him, won both the men's ski jumping event in 1932 and the downhill racing event in 1936, uh-uh. making him the only athlete to ever win both in the Winter Olympics. Number 86. The Holman Collin Ski oh. Festival is the world's oldest ski festival. Attracting nearly 1 million people per year, it was established as early as 1872. Number 87. I always wanted to try skiing, but then sometimes I'd be like, you know what? 
I don't even do the snow that much, so that would be different. While skiing is their national sport, and you know, that a lot of their stuff is to do with skiing, they do love football or soccer, and that's considered to be the most popular sport in the country. Number 88. It's said that the paperclip was invented by Johan Valier in 1887. Paperclip. Without him, we never would have had Clippy, so, Clippy. you know, thank you, Valier. Number 89. The Lerdol Tunnel is the world's longest road tunnel at 15 miles and is located in the Vestland. It cost wow. 113.1 million US dollars to make, or around 1.082 billion Norwegian kroner. Number That's an interesting little tunnel right here. It's really lit up like this, huh? That's to make, pretty cool. Or around 1.082 billion Look Norwegian it looked like I have a decision, like a tough decision to make. You either go straight or, you know, go into the blue or you go into the green. Norwegian kroner. Number 90. How long did that like, take that's to a make lot to think about. Ask? Well, work on the tunnel began in 1995, and it wasn't completed until 2020. No, I'm joking. 2000. The tunnel sees around 2,000 vehicles wow. every single day. Number 91. It's worth noting that Norway has a very tall, dark, and handsome mountain called God Holpigen. At 8,100 feet tall, it's actually the highest mountain in the whole of Scandinavia, too. Wow. Number 92. Another thing about Norway, they have some fast ladies, let me tell ya. Oslo-born Greta Veitz was the first woman to run a marathon in less than two and a half hours. Number 93. Sognefjorden is the largest fjord in Norway and third largest in the world. It's the longest ice-free fjord in the world and stretches see, I think I've seen, miles I've seen this quite often from the in ocean. Videos. Number 94. Speaking of lakes, which we weren't, but pretend we were, the country has 450,000 of them. Is that too many? Some might say that's too many. Number 95. That's a lot. That's Remember a when lot. I mentioned Minnesota earlier? Well, Minnesota is the unofficial Norwegian capital of the United States, as more Norwegians live there than in any other state. Number 96. Officially adopted on the 17th of January 1821, the flag of Norway was designed by a guy called Frederick Meltzer, who was a member Meltzer. of Parliament. Number 97. Originally, the national flag of Norway was described as one that had a golden lion with a crown and an axe on a red background. However, this flag gradually phased out in the 17th and 18th centuries. The original flag is still one present used as the royal standard, though. Number 98. Vinifosin is the Vinifosin. world's sixth tallest and Europe's highest waterfall. It's around 860 wow. meters in height. Number 99. Dang. If you have to go to Norway and like looking at animals, here are the ones you can find there. The red squirrel, a polar bear, musk... Dang. I'm... To go to Norway and like looking at animals, here are the ones you can find there. The red squirrel... A red squirrel? That... That thing look amazing, I ain't even gonna lie, I like the color on it. That's... A polar bear, musk ox, vipers, oh, and reindeer. <laughs> this is number 100, over. There is a village in Norway that's particularly hellish, let me tell ya. Well, in, in the, it's called Hell. It has oh, 1,524 inhabitants. So... Number 101. It's worth noting about the village, by the way, that the temperature there can reach minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit mm. or minus 25 degrees Celsius in winter, which means hell quite literally freezes over every year. <laughs> so that was one of the facts about That's Norway. Good. Have you ever been to Norway? Do you live in Norway? Have you ever met Sir Niels the Penguin? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to One on One Facts if you haven't done so already, like all the cool kids have. Come join, <laughs> it's a party. In the meantime, though, oh Lord above, look at no, I, mean, I definitely look like 101 facts, though. These these be good. They be good. Definitely interesting though. Sometimes I feel like if you watch the one hundred one fact, you might get a lot. But I feel like it's still so much more out there. That feeling video. That's crazy. Thirty seven minutes. That's like a almost forty minute video right there. But I definitely love to learn about Norway and can't wait to see more. So y'all continue to send me those recommendations so I can check out some more videos from Norway. Uh, but yeah, Norway, Norway is great. Norway is great. Like I said, I might have to visit Minnesota as well just to see if I can get a little Scandinavian or Norway experience, you know, before I get to visit there. But that's all I have for this video. Y'all hit that subscribe button and y'all be blessed. Be the best and be you. I'm out.